Okay. I'd like to welcome Daniel Knudsen with us today. I'll let him share a little bit about what he's doing, about a documentary he's been working on for a long time, and uh, looking forward to some of his story and how he came to see the victorious gospel and uh, however else the Lord would need him to share with us today. So, Daniel, welcome. Welcome to Zoom Fellowship Sunday. Well, thank you, Jerry. I just want to echo uh, an appreciation for Jerry's book, Hope Beyond Hell. That was such a powerful tool and resource, even in my own journey to mm -hmm. coming into this message, that there really is a foundation for believing in the authority of scripture and believing in God's loving kindness and his goodness reaching to all people. Mm -hmm. uh, so just by way of introduction, my name is Daniel. I think I know about half of you here. We've had the chance to meet up on other Zoom calls. Uh, I work in the film industry. I work in entertainment. And uh, over the past decade working in Hollywood, uh, I got involved in working in some different aspects of the Christian film industry. And because of that, I started working with a lot of different uh, Christian leaders, had a chance to meet a number of them kind of up close and personal and kind of seeing how the apparatus ran from the inside uh, with very powerful people uh, dealing with big budgets, lots of money. And it, it, it was an interesting experience. Uh, there were some phenomenal people uh, that are in leadership. You saw some uh, scandals and other things kind of behind the scenes. But what I, what I tended to see a lot was people working as hard as they could uh, for like the end goal of trying to keep people out of hell. And what, what I saw with that is that really leads to a discouraged, defeated mentality with those who are in some cases working the hardest because no matter how hard we work, no matter how many people we can save from eternal destruction, there's millions or billions more that are going to be lost. So there was just... There was a lot of uh, a lot of discouragement that I saw up close personally that I just kind of couldn't reconcile with with the very simple message of Jesus. Jesus says, "I'm come to give you life and to give you life more abundantly." So, how do we access that life, and why aren't we seeing it? And I think that that uh, an important thing to realize. We also know from scripture that it's the joy of the Lord is our strength. And the way we see this particular issue of afterlife and judgment and how, how the scriptural message ties into this, I believe is critically important for this reason. It is because it is a critical revelation of identity, how we see God will determine how we see ourselves. If we see a God that's willing to write people off for all eternity, has no problem sending them off into the abyss of judgment and, and never doing anything else about it. If that's the kind of God we serve, that determines how we live our own lives. It determines our own set of values and that determines who we are. The Bible says we've been created in God's image. Uh, we also read in the New Testament, when a student is fully trained, he will be like his teacher. So if we're becoming like that, and that is our identity, that determines who we are, uh, especially if you look around in modern society right now. Well, this has been true, I guess, for all of time. I think we see it, though, in a major display right now. All power plays are done through identity. If you can take someone's identity hostage, if you can tell them what their identity is, you can determine their thoughts, their attitudes, and their actions. So power plays are made through identity. Identity is so critically important. It's such a powerful thing because who we are determines everything else. And the reason why I believe the message of universal reconciliation is so important is because it reveals who we are in God's eyes, who all people are in God's eyes, that we, uh, we, we've, we've obviously fallen short of, of the glory of God. Uh, we, we know this very, very clearly from, from reading Romans, uh, 
if we're honest with ourselves, we know from our own lives that we've all sinned, we've all fallen short of God's glory. But I feel sometimes uh, the devil can even twist our understanding of, of sin and want us to see our identity as strictly being fallen human beings uh because that is if ultimately we can embrace that identity and and own it i i'm from a more presbyterian background i love uh, i personally love uh, the presbyterian church i still worship in in a presbyterian church but i think that that's uh one thing that we've uh kind of almost embraced this this uh too much this idea that you know all people uh, all people are are just we're all sinners and total depravity. And, and though that is true, we have all fallen short. We are still all children of God that are eternally loved by God. Uh, we know from Genesis that God created man in his image. Uh, so we are literally the offspring of God going uh, through our lives. And when we see ourselves that way and see other people that way, that question, that core question of identity is, is really different because now you're not just a worthless piece of trash that's nothing but sin. You are literally the divine offspring of God that has been, uh, ultimately we understand, deceived and we've been tainted by sin, but the eternal love of God is still strongly for us. He's redeeming us. If you look all throughout the scripture, the Old and New Testament, you see this pattern of rescue that God is rescuing and redeeming his people. Uh, and I believe he continues to do that uh, until every last one is rescued. So uh, that's just one of the things that's been on my heart lately. I think this message is so important. I was working in the Christian film industry, working alongside uh, different pastors and Christian leaders and started seeing a lot of things that didn't add up, which led me to a deep study of scripture and in studying scripture, I started thinking, uh, seeing passages that were seemingly contradictory to everything I had been taught uh, pretty much my whole life with uh, the kind of churches that uh, that I was raised in. And, and uh, I really was just overcome by the verse uh, that it is the goodness of God that leads us to repentance. It is God's goodness that brings us to repentance, that brings us to himself. And I can see in my own life and just even in the lives of other people, the only catalyst for true change is love. You can force someone to temporarily change their actions. And if you're extremely powerful, you may even be able to force someone to change their mind but you can never force someone to change their heart. The only thing that can do that is love. Love is the most powerful force on earth and it's the only thing that really changes us. But as I started really researching uh, into scripture, it's the goodness of God that leads us to repentance. I started questioning some of the, uh, some of the uh, dogmas that you know we've been raised with that we've all believed that anyone outside of the faith is going to be uh, burned forever. I love the way uh, that uh, the professor stated it a few minutes ago when he said, God loves you, loves you, loves you, loves you, loves you. But if you don't get it quite right, he burns you, burns you, burns you, burns you, burns you. Uh, so these, uh, these questions, I had never, I'd never seen a good biblical defense of the, uh, the idea of universal reconciliation that this was that this was a biblical view i had no idea that the early church strongly believed this and i came across uh jerry's book hope beyond hell that really illuminated some of my understanding for the first time that there was a strong biblical case that could be made uh from the bible that god's love uh, is redeeming us and he continues to redeem until he redeems all of the people this is just it's so consistent with the parables of Jesus. You look at the, the parable of the lost sheep. And I think the three words in that that really arrest me every time is until he... Daniel, uh, Daniel, can, yeah. can you hold on one minute? Um, we've, got a, we've been having a static for the last uh, 15 seconds. So maybe you'll have to go back and repeat that. Let me make sure I mute all again. And so you'll have to unmute yourself, Daniel. Okay, we got that sound out. So sorry about that. Could you just back up just a couple more sentences and uh, repeat? Because uh, you were being uh, 
drowned out a little bit. No, no problem. I was just uh, just getting to my favorite, one of my favorite parables in scripture. Uh, it's actually a, a, a trilogy of parables. It's the lost coin, the lost sheep, and uh, the lost son, or what we sometimes call the prodigal son. But the, the story of the lost sheep, uh, what, what I, the, the three words to me that really stand out are, you know, until he finds. It talks about the shepherd going out uh, and searching for that lost sheep until he finds. And I believe this is a revelation of God's character that he continues to go out and he continues to seek until he finds, until he finds uh, every last one. So uh, it's funny just seeing scripture in the, the eye from the perspective of a God who is infinitely powerful and infinitely loving you, you just rejoice in the parables in a whole new way. You rejoice in the story in a whole new way because all of our lives, we've been kind of told the Bible uh, and the story of, of God, it's, it's a rescue story. And while it has a rescue scene in the story, it's really a much grander love story that there's a rescue scene uh, in, 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 inside of this greater story, this greater narrative of God. And I think we see this uh, throughout all of creation. You see, you see God's work redeeming people, transforming their lives, changing them. So I, I read Hope Beyond Hell. That was a very helpful book for me, seeing that there's a biblical, uh, a biblical foundation for this. This is not just wishful mm -hmm. thinking. And then, mm -hmm. as I researched Hope Beyond Hell, I started getting into some of the early church, uh, the early, the f early church fathers, reading their uh, their perspectives on this issue. And I, I had no idea. I had no idea that the first 500 years of the Christian faith, that mm -hmm. the majority view by far was universal restoration. I had never heard that before. Uh, I hadn't really heard that too much from anyone. The only um, the only place I'd kind of heard of sort of universalist Christianity, if you will, was from uh, a teacher by the name of Rob Bell. He's got some great stuff. I think sometimes his presentation doesn't really work for people. Uh, he uh, he kind of sometimes, I think, asks a lot of questions, uh, some very good questions, but never really gives uh, sometimes solid, reasoned uh, responses and, and uh, answers to some of the questions that people have and giving, giving solid kind of biblical, theological, and historic, historical church arguments for, uh, for some of these things. But anyways, I, uh, I really appreciated Hope Beyond Hell. As I read that, I became really very convinced that it is the goodness of God that leads mm -hmm. us to repentance. And just like the goodness of God leads me to repentance, the goodness of God is leading uh, all of my non-Christian friends to repentance. The goodness of God is leading all the people I don't know to repentance. The goodness of God is leading the, all the people of all the nations of all the world to repentance. And uh, whether in this life or the next, God ultimately wins. Every knee mm -hmm. will bow. Every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And, uh, you know, we read that, that passage, every knee will bow, every tongue will confess. And the connotation of the, the, those words uh, will bow and will confess. It's not, it's not a forced confession. Uh, it's, not, it's not the dictator that, you know, say this or I'll tear out your tongue, you know, bash out your kneecaps and force you to bow. This, uh, the connotation is they will joyfully bow, they'll joyfully confess. It's a celebration. And I believe that's exactly what the goodness of God does. The goodness of God leads us to repentance. It leads us to see that God is ultimately to be worshiped, to be praised. He is worthy of all. And uh, so to me, this is so exciting. It's so fascinating. I think we're clearly in historic times right now. I believe uh, we're seeing we're seeing a great change. I think whether or not uh, I, you believe in a, the prophetic gifts or, or, or you're more Presbyterian like I am, I think it's, it's very, very, very clear going on out in the world right now is a time of massive change. There's a time of great, great forces on the move. And uh, mm -hmm. I believe we're 
at the tipping point of a new reformation. And uh, I hope that this, this new reformation is leading people to again see and discover the goodness of God. It's the goodness of God that leads us to repentance. Mm -hmm. It's the goodness of God that's transforming us to be like him. You know, all of, all of I believe, the false religions teach that uh, the problem is, is out there and the salvation uh, is, is in here. You can do something, achieve something, learn something, master of self to overcome the 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 evil and and you can save yourself and i believe that the true gospel is that uh the problem is internal uh the problem is 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 inside of us we've all fallen short but salvation is completely it's external it's jesus christ he he saves us he redeems us we cannot save ourselves but in his goodness he leads us uh to freely choose him so it it's it's uh it's really what reconciled my, my understanding of kind of what I grew up with, uh, the, the sovereignty of God and a lot of the strengths of more, the more traditional, I think, uh, some of the more traditional Christian uh, denominations that really emphasize God's sovereignty and things like that. And then the strengths of uh, sometimes the more, the more charismatic side of our, our, our Christian fellowships, the more uh, potentially Baptist and free will leaning side of, of Christianity. It's, it's both God's, uh, God's sovereignty and in his sovereignty he leads our free will to choose him and to love him and he lets our free will discover that through through his amazing wisdom through his creation so uh being all excited about this message over, over the last uh, decade and a half as I've kind of come into this I've been working on a documentary uh that uh, Jerry mentioned earlier it's called Eternal Theater and uh, the subtitle is What Religion Gets Wrong About Hell. And I think we need to rediscover a healthy view of judgment. God's judgment is real. And I don't know exactly what it looks like or exactly what it entails, but his judgments are always good. His judgments lead us to him. Uh, a good parent uses discipline not to get revenge upon a child, but to train them and to ultimately lead that child to a higher moral consciousness. And I think that's exactly what God does. He's the perfect parent. Uh, the Bible says in Matthew 5, in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus says, be perfect as your father is perfect. God is that perfect parent. He is the all loving parent. And he, in his wisdom, he can use mistakes and uh, sin to lead us to a higher understanding of his goodness and his perfection that we want him and appreciate and worship him even more. So uh, this, this message really excites me a lot. And as a result, I've been working on this movie. I want to make a documentary that uh, can kind of introduce people who maybe not are not familiar with this uh, particular viewpoint at this time to understand the uh, historical church position, especially those uh, church fathers and, and, and church mothers, even of the first 500 years of the faith to see uh, the perspective on this has actually not been what we've always thought it was as the, the majority view, especially here in the West, uh, in the Western church, that's been heavily influenced by Augustine, that the idea of eternal hell was, was not a majority view until you really saw that the church become heavily intertwined politically with certain agendas. Uh, some good things came out of that, but some bad things as well. And you definitely saw people using, especially church leaders and government leaders using fear to manipulate people's earthly allegiance and to worship of ultimately the state and fear of the state and control and all these things that really run contradictory to the message of Jesus, especially to uh, some of the message of the, the very, very clear message of Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount that he gives, you know, and uh, the, the clear admonishment we're told love our enemies flies in the face of, of some of these other things. Daniel, um, I have to mute again because there's that static again. So let me just back up one sentence. I'm just going to mute all again. Okay, we're good. Daniel, if you can unmute yourself, thank you. I don't know how that happens, but when you're 33 people on or 34, mm -hmm. um, there's always going to be some noises once in a while. So, no problem. No problem. Well, I, I don't know if there was a question there or not, but I 
think we're back. Uh, anyways, I'm just open the chat again so I can see what happens. Uh, I don't know if there was a question there or not. Someone said oh, something about opening the chat. I think if you just that that was me talking to Jerry. Sorry. Oh no, no problem. There's a little chat button in the. Uh, the uh the screen right next to us here so i was just just kind of wrapping up but uh for me it was fascinating to discover that the early church taught uh a largely the majority of them taught the universal restoration of all things that was a very established teaching in the early church and we kind of lost that and we've forgotten it and uh i want to see i want to see that teaching come back and be celebrated in a way like never before I believe we have a great uh, responsibility, but just a, a great advantage that uh, some of the old church never had. And that was that we, we've got the, through electronic communication and social media, we can spread the truth uh, potentially at an unprecedented rate. Certainly deceptions and lies and other things can be spread, but I believe we've been seeing this collective change in sort of human consciousness and understanding as a result of the internet. So I think getting these kinds of messages out in this time is especially important. And that's what I want to do with this documentary, Eternal Theater. I'll put a little link to the trailer here in the uh, chat box. But uh, the goal is to share the message of God's goodness with all people and to see and celebrate God leading all of his children back into his family. And my, my goal is I, I would like, I'd love to see the church reignited and fall in love with Jesus once again. I think so many people have been fighting so hard for so long and they're just worn out soldiers in a battle that they just feel they're being completely annihilated in and they're doing the best they can, but it's kind of this circle the wagons mentality and we're going to take the gunfire as long as we can. And uh, it's going to be pretty much a, uh, a suicide mission here. We know we're going to, we're going to lose badly, but uh, I don't, I don't, I don't think that's, uh, I don't think that's the message of the gospel. God, God is uh, redeeming all people regardless of what it looks like from our perspective, he wins big in the end. He wins all people. We need to be faithful. We need to share God's love. And I've just seen in my own life uh, coming into this message, just a whole new excitement about my faith. I'm, I'm in the younger generation. I'm turning 33 a little later this month. A lot of the people I grew up with in church, they've all walked away from Christianity. Some of them have become vitriolically anti-christian and i think uh the reason is because they a lot of them didn't see uh and really get to experience the true wonder of a god who's ultimately good and if you have a chance to truly meet a god who's ultimately good the god the, god, the only true god who is ultimately good you cannot help but revel in that wonder and be lost forever. And I think uh, the old catechism, the, the, what is the, the whole purpose of human life? It's to, to know God, to experience him and to enjoy him forever. And uh, that's, that's what we want to do. Uh, I think, I, I hope, I, I think we are uh, going to see great things ahead. Things are changing. Time is, uh, time is marching on. These are kind of crazy days with what's going on in the last year with, covid and worldwide transitions uh it's it's an exciting time to be alive i was in church this morning and i was thinking to myself i'm so glad that i get a chance to live in this century right now it's mm -hmm. such a unique time in human history i don't know what we're going to see next but we get to be alive right now during this time so we can hold fast and really go forward enjoy joy of the Lord is our strength. Our identity is in the God who makes all things new. Our identity is in the God who is all powerful. Our identity is in the God who redeems his enemies. Our identity is in the God who makes his enemies into his friends. That's mm -hmm. our identity. That's our inheritance. That's our birthright. That's our faith. That is our joy. That is our excitement. So, uh, so that's, that's uh, that's where I'm at. Uh, I'm sorry. I know I'm kind of preaching, but uh, I'm just all excited. So this is uh, this is this is this is what's been on my heart lately. And uh, we're just about done with this documentary. Jerry's been really helpful. 
he's been giving me some uh, helpful things to kind of add and tweak. We've been shooting some additional stuff, just trying to make this uh, as precise as we can make it. And then I should have this out here in the next couple of months. It'll be on all the platforms. We'll have it on DVD. It'll be on uh, Amazon Prime, all the different streaming sites. Uh, we'll probably have it on YouTube eventually, uh, just so that it's easily shareable, easily, uh, you know, easy to uh, easy to access, so that people can uh, see it. And if you're like me and you still have a lot of uh, a lot of, I, I, you know, Christian friends who maybe are, you know, you want to, you know, you know, hey, would you watch a documentary? Share it with them. You know, hear what they think. I I could say for me personally, just making this documentary, I've been. Uh, sending links that even though it hasn't been released yet, I've been sending links to a number of my friends and even some of my friends who are, uh, you know, strongly in the eternal conscious torment camp, uh, watched it. And it's been a, a great conversation starter. Uh, even I have a friend who's a Baptist evangelist who saw mm -hmm. it and, and we had a long conversation. It was like, I, I have to admit, I, I kept pausing it as I was watching. I was like researching every little thing you were saying. So I found what you were saying to be uh, well-researched and uh, accurate as I don't agree with the conclusions you're coming to, but this is a fascinating thing to think about. So it's, it's a conversation starter. We'll see what happens, but uh, I think, I think that's about all. So uh, Jerry, I guess I can hand it back to you. I don't know. If hey, wonderful. You covered a lot of stuff and uh and I'm really glad you did. This is great. 